Hi guys, today we're gonna be talking about po polytops in higher dimensions. So polytops basically just mean things in like 2D, 3D, 4D, all of those classified together. Okay, so first we're gonna start with shapes in 2D. Now in 2D there are like infinitely many shapes because you can keep adding another side. So for example, triangle, square, pentagon, and hexagon, which is six. And if you kept on going infinitely, you would get a circle. Okay. So in 2D, there are infinite of these and regular shapes. Keep in mind, we're not including stuff like that. Okay, that's not included in our list. So basically, yeah, there are like infinitely many shapes in 2D. Now let's jump on to 3D. Now here we have a few restrictions. Now all the sides must be the same. So it can't just have like one side be a hexagon and another be a pentagon. No, none of that allowed. Uh, second thing is that the same number of faces should meet at each corner or edge. So you can't just have like uh, a, right, where three triangles meet at one corner but four meet at the other. So none of that allowed. And it has to be convex, which means that they can't just have shapes like that don't touch each other. Okay, now using these restrictions, uh, there are actually only five shapes we can do. So, so first we're just gonna start with triangles. So, now if we put three, okay, now if you put three triangles around the corner, which I'm just gonna do quickly here, and put the triangle at the bottom, just keep in mind, this is the bottom triangle. Then you would get a tetrahedron, now, because I'm using a two-dimensional paper, uh, I can try to make a three-dimensional drawing of this. This is what the tetrahedron looks like. There's also a triangle at the bottom, which you can't see. Just, just say that there's a triangle at the bottom, even though you can't see it. Okay, now let's put four triangles around a corner. So, ba, 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 ba. Now, if we try to close this, we will get four triangles and we will get, and if we put, take another one of that, put that on the bottom, boom, we would get the octahedron, which I'm, which is, which I'm drawing now. Keep in mind, this one's actually kind of hard to draw. Uh, there is a eight side at the back corner. You can't see it. My drawing's not that good here. Okay. Okay, now let's put five triangles around the corner. Okay. So, here, here. That's five. That's five, right? Okay, yes. Now, if we, now, the like, so, I don't actually really know, but, so, you all just have to imagine this on your own. <laughs> So now, now for the icosahedron, it takes a little more thinking. Okay, so first you take another one of this, but don't just put it there because otherwise we'll break one of the rules which we had. Now rotate that bottom part by 36 degrees. And then we go in an arrangement of triangles like this. Up, down, up, down uh, for 10 triangles. So you can try to imagine that. Hmm? Got it? Great. So that is that is the third platonic solid. Now you're most likely wondering now, what if we put six triangles at, around the corner? That's a good question. So, so this will be easier for me to just draw it. I know it's not really like actually. Now, now. Notice here that it it's fully ob uh, it's a full 360 here because there's no way you can try to fold this and if you try to fold it it, it would overlap so uh, that's not good so we're done with triangles if you try to put seven triangles it wouldn't even fit into the frame so at this point triangles are useless <coughs> so now let's move on to squares 
Okay, now if we put three squares around a corner, and then we would get a, we would start to be making a cube. So I'm gonna make the corner of the cube, which I was drawing with the three triangles. So yeah, there is three squares at the back also. You have to imagine those. Now, if you try to put four, of these squares then we will get the same problem as we had last time when we try to put six triangles around the corner as you can see there's a full 360 overlap <laughs> okay now let's move on to pentagons i almost said hexagons <laughs> <laughs> so now with pentagons it's actually a little confusing but i'll explain this easily okay now now a good example of this so now if we try to put three pentagons here i know this one's a bit that's my drawing here okay now if we try to put three pentagons around a corner this is a corner okay even though it might look like might not look like it it is okay <laughs> just and then we would get the pen a dodecahedron 12 sides now it's kind of hard to draw but basically and now now take a pentagon put five pentagons around it which i'll just do real quick in here now and and last one okay this is not a good drawing though okay if you just put take another one of these Rotate that one by 36 degrees, I think. Then, and put them together, it will make the dodecahedron. And that is our final platonic solid. You may be wondering, why can't we just put four pentagons? Well, let's try that. Shall we? Okay. Okay, just gonna put... Uh. And same problem as last time. Hmm. 360 overlap here. We're done with pentagons. Now you're thinking, what if we move on to hexagons? Well, let's try that. So, now with hexagons, the problem is they'll always have a full 360. Think it. <laughs> Hexagon. Just made a mistake. Now, now the problem here is 360 overlap. <laughs> now, what if now you're thinking, what if we move to heptagons, which are seven sided shapes, by the way? Even though I did not say that while I was talking about 2D, but don't care about that. Okay, don't actually have enough to say for that on this paper, so I'll just move on to this one, which I have for backup. Now, the problem with heptagons. They don't even fit into the frame to make a corner. And they also look at me even to me, so I don't really like them that much even. Okay, fine. Now we're done with 3D. Let's move on to 4D. Now, now you're probably thinking 4D, now you're probably thinking 4D is going to be really confusing. And yes, it is. But I'm going to do this without any confusion here. I hope I'm not wrong here. Okay, now first let's use tetrahedrons. And now with a tetrahedron, if you... Now with tetrahedrons, if you put three of them around the corner, then and fold them in, and then they would make a four-dimensional tetrahedron, hyper-tetrahedron corner. Now you're probably thinking, but there's an overlap. Well, that's actually because it's 4D and we only see things that are 3D, right? So, and so they didn't actually just overlap. They just popped into the four dimension. Kind of like how we were doing the 2D shapes. They just didn't just overlap. They just popped into the third dimension. So, and if we took five tetrahedrons, then we would get the hyper tetrahedron okay now if we put four tetrahedrons around the corner 
you could actually make something called a 16 cell, which has 16 of these tetrahedrons. If you were to put five around the corner, oh, now here's where it gets crazy. Then you would get the 600 cell, which has 600 of the tetrahedrons. That's quite a lot, actually. <coughs> Just with, I know, it's crazy, right? Yeah, four, everything is 4D is crazy, actually. Six triangles, six tetrahedrons, same problem as we did in 3D. Now, okay, so we're done with that. Now let's use cubes. Now we put, I think, three cubes around a corner. We would get a corner of a hypercube. And to make a hypercube, we need eight cubes. So, and, okay. Uh, if you try to put four, same problem. I don't know why I'm even saying that. Because I've already talked that like a thousand times. But I just have to keep saying that. Or otherwise you guys won't understand. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. So. And. Now we. Now let's use the octahedron. Now for the octahedron. We will get the 24 cell which takes 24 octahedrons and that's a lot but not as much as the 600 cell hmm. okay now would i actually forgot to tell you this but this 600 cell actually belongs to the icosahedron but as number file addressed in that video on this they actually said that the icosahedron is way too shallow for it but we're not on number file here, okay? Okay, anyways. The dodecahedron, we would create now, since the gap is so little with the dodecahedrons, we have to create 120 of them, which is a lot. And I can't really draw that on paper, so you'll just have to imagine that in your head. <laughs> and it's crazy, you're most likely already thinking. And it is. Of course it is. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyways, now let's move on to 5D. Now, uh, now here there are only actually three shapes we can make. Like, by the way. So, uh, I actually only know two of them though. So, you'll probably have to guess what that third one is called. Now, in 5D, we can only use two of our 4D shapes, the hyper tetrahedron and the hypercube. Now, with the hyper tetrahedron, it's going to get really crazy. But if we try to project that in 3D, it, get, it would actually lose some of its symmetry. And there are no, there's actually like infinite of these. We're only including one. Because, you know, if we good infinite of them, uh, this video would be, like, infinitely long. <laughs> okay, anyways. Now with the hypercube, same problem. We actually have to lose some of the symmetry to make it look 5D. Now with every other dimension coming, there's only three shapes. 63 shapes, 73 shapes, 83 shapes and 93 shapes so every other dimension from 5d and up have only three shapes that follow the rules that i talked about now here so yeah oh and 1d and 0d they only have one shape each because in 0d you have a dot or a point that's really small and then 1d lines uh just comment me if have you have any question and hope you learned something new bye <laughs>